In today's regulatory environment, we've seen an unprecedented increase in cooperation between regulators globally. And as a result of that increased global cooperation, whenever any entity decides or elects to make a self-disclosure, you must focus and factor into your calculus whether or not that self-disclosure in one jurisdiction will lead to exposure in other jurisdictions. So no longer is a disclosure just a local matter, it's become a globalized matter because the regulators between the Serious Fraud Office in the UK, the SEC and DOJ uh, in Washington DC are all sharing information in real time. So if you're a multinational company doing business globally and you have a systemic problem within your organization. We see um, much more enforcement and the enforcement is, is not limited to the classic jurisdictions like the US and increasingly the UK. So um, only in the last sort of few weeks there's been uh, there's been uh, reporting of an investigation by the Chinese authorities into uh, GSK and a number of other pharmaceutical companies. I think that's an interesting development. Um, there are more whistleblowers who are featuring. Um, in the US, there is a particular regime which encourages whistleblowers to come forward, and they are uh, effectively compensated or remunerated for coming forward. Um, compliance programs require uh, employees to be educated uh, and educated employees in turn are bringing issues up to management and the challenge for management is how do they respond to those whistleblowers. So I think the emergence of whistleblowers increased enforcement. Um, companies are putting pressure on other companies. Uh, ultimately in order to have an effective compliance program you need to actively manage your third parties whether they are joint venture parties or whether they are suppliers and that uh, element of, of um, uh, that part of the program is in turn driving behaviour beyond the UK, beyond the US to jurisdictions such as South Africa. The starting point is to have a look at what our regulatory environment is and to understand what is happening in the context, in the broader context of, of the world, and the glo global village as it is. We in South Africa do follow closely, tend to follow closely the UK legislation. So we have the trilogy of statutes that, uh, that is the Prevention of Organised Crime Act, uh, the uh, money laundering legislation, and then uh, also the corruption legislation, which is, is very similar. So active and passive bribery or corruption is outlawed. That means if you offer a bribe or if you agree to accept a bribe, so that's the active and passive, and both, both in the public and in the private space. Uh, in South Africa recently, we've seen um, that uh, amongst peers, where there are tender processes, for instance, uh, you feel left out, you feel hard done by, there are civil remedies, uh, you can avail yourself of the courts, uh, damages claims, we've seen the enforcement through the competition authorities in the construction industry, uh, which has yielded fines of, of 1.5 billion, uh, which is actually a very current topic at the moment. But we also see a willingness of the, from government side uh, to step up its enforcement. It's perhaps been a criticism of, of government. Bearing in mind South Africa is a developing country, so we don't have all the resources. Government has certainly stepped up its, um, its talk about this, and it's starting to walk the talk.